Well, welcome to the Clinical Leadership Podcast. I'm really honored here today with our, our special guest and, and my uh, business mentor and colleague, Mr. Paul Goff. Paul, thanks for joining us today. How are you doing? Wonderful. Great to be here. Thanks for, uh, thanks for having us. Well, I have to say that I'm a victim of your uh, methods. I have to say, you know, I first heard about you in 2015 as I got out of chiropractic school. And I, when I first heard you, I, I thought this, this guy is, he's not for me. This is, this is a little bit out there. And I almost like put you to the side. And I definitely put you to the side. Um, you were saying things I didn't understand. Um, you were addressing problems like on an internal level that I didn't comprehend. And then a, a strange thing happened. Every problem I ran into in starting a practice, you were already answering those questions before I, I encountered them. And that immediately established trust. Like I trusted you. I, I, I had no idea yeah. who you were, but you knew me. And it was a strange thing. Yes. You knew me. And you, uh, I, with the material you put out there, the books that you've written uh, and just uh, the, the courses that you've put on, I, I immediately felt like you understood me. And so I couldn't wait to learn more from you. And I did that with your podcast. I've done that with your books and I've done that with commitments into your programs. So I do want to let our listeners know, full disclosure, I am a Paul Goff 4% Club member. And uh, we, we will go into that in a little bit more detail. And um, I, so I do have a bias. I want to start off this by saying, <laughs> I do, I do, I do really strongly uh, believe and uh, have seen proof in your methods. And so I just wanted to take some time today uh, to just go over your background and let people get to know you a little bit more from our, our, uh, our world. Um, so again, Paul, thanks for coming on and uh, just give us a little background into you and, and what you got you into this physio world and, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So how I, uh, how I arrived, if you like, at this point, uh, my backstory, so I'm from the northeast of England originally. I'm from a small little town called Hartlepool, which I, I always like to try and put on the map and um, is, a, is a very small economically challenged cha uh, town in the northeast of England. Um, I was um, I graduated as a fully licensed physical therapist. I went on to work in professional soccer. I worked for two different soccer teams. Uh, I was very fortunate to you know, be around some top level athletes and work with some amazing doctors and um, got the, the skills and the confidence then to go out and do my own thing. I started my own practice when I was 27 and built a four clinic location uh, or four location clinic, if you like, across the northeast of England, um, serves anywhere up to, to 1,000 to 1,500 visits a month. Um, with staff now who run that business uh, for me. So I, uh, and it's still active to this day, as I, as I speak to you, I'm as committed to it as I probably ever have been. COVID has, has given me a, a wonderful uh, period of time to, to kind of really take stock of the things that I want and, you know, what I want for my business. So I'm, uh, I'm as actively involved in my physio business now as I ever, ever have been with building um, and adding more team to it. Uh, so I have a team that run that for me, and I moved to the United States in uh, 2019 to pursue what was my uh, big opportunity to be able to coach and counsel and mentor other physical therapy business owners like yourself and, and people listening to this chiropractors. I work with OTs uh, that would, um, you know, would, would be looking for advice on the, the things that I'd learned from uh, getting my business to where it, you know, where it is today. And here I am in Orlando. Uh, fast forward, uh, fast forward ten years since I started, or, or thirteen years since I started that business. Um, I have now a property development business. I have a, a real estate rental business. Um, I'm I'm a business guy who who kind of consults and coaches at the at the. You know, I almost feel like I moonlight these days as a coach and consultant because I. Uh, it's not, you know, it's, it's not my primary thing, if you like, as much as I'm very committed to it. I, I always say I'm a, I'm a business owner that uh, ultimately uh, takes some, some wax and some, uh, learn some lessons. And uh, I, I have the privilege of sharing those lessons with people who are interested in my work. Man, that's a lot. So when you, when you see a stranger in an airport, what do you, t and they ask you, Hey, wh what do you do? What's your uh, answer? You got so many different uh, things. What do you say? Uh, Honestly, I just still say physical therapist. It's easier, yeah. and that's the that's the joke. My my you know, my partner Natalie. She, whenever we have to fill out forms and it says job description, she like you know for new schools and stuff. She's like, "What do I put these days?" And I always come up with some you know some kind of sarcastic legend or you can put whatever you know whatever you want. It's kind of like my personality, if you like. But I, I just go look. Just put physical therapist. It's just so much easier, and and it it stops the the ten minute trying to explain what actually um, what actually I do these days. So. Um, 
I, I'm just a business guy. I love business. Anybody, you know, that kind of hangs around with me, I, I genuinely get a thrill out of learning and, and um, growing businesses and all of the, the hassle and the crap and the, the, the SHIT that comes with it and the, uh, the you know, the, the moments of uh, ecstasy that uh, you get from from being a business owner. So, yeah, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm still a physical therapist. If you if you look at the census records, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. no, very, very good. Very good. I am. Um... I do want to unpack that a little bit because you, yeah. you took, you definitely took a leap and, and I want to use that phrase, uh, you know, uh, properly because you left professional soccer in which, you know, I actually serve as the team chiropractor for the Chicago women's uh, soccer team out here. Um, yeah. And so like, it's, it's like, there's some status or there's some, you know, respect by, by working in a professional league. That's just, yeah based on the position it's an authority position a professional team wants it you get it so you left that and you started your own practice and then from there you grew you grew into what you have today but what was that leap like like when you first went into clinical practice out on your own in a country where healthcare was free and you were asking people to make serious commitments towards their health uh, and financially as well what what was that what and i'm really interested in your deciding factor like what made you want to take that leap yeah i'd love to sit here and tell you and i could come up with the the story that i'm supposed to tell you is that it was frightening that it was um nerve-wracking and it was you know hours and hours and days and weeks of like torment and you know all of this and i I can't tell you that i can tell you that i knew wholeheartedly that that's what i was wanting to do and that if I wanted to get the best of me and the best version of Paul that that was a natural evolution that I had to go down and I've been very much in tune with living my life in a way that is passionate that is congruent with who I am and what um, and where the flow takes me at that time rather than resisting um, things that intuitively and I think actually we all intuitively know that we need to quit the job and do the thing but we can be sidelined or delay doing it. And we come up with all sorts of excuses that, you know, come from family or come from all my responsibilities or, oh, but I haven't saved my time yet. And for me, it was actually a case of, um, I couldn't think of anything else that I wanted to do except be a business owner and run a, you know, run my own private practice. And it wasn't that I disrespect, it wasn't that I didn't love my job. I did. Um, I've been very lucky that I've always loved everything I've done. So whatever phase I was in, I found a way to get the best out of it, whether that's my outlook on life or my uh, study that that gives me a better outlook on life. But I can tell you that somebody that is is negative and dour in one situation, nearly always in the end ends up negative and dour and unfulfilled in the next situation. Said differently that if you're at work right now or somebody's listening to this and is like, you know, really negative about their job, believe me, within six months, you'll be negative about in a private practice. But if you've got that uh, positive enthusiasm and, and vibrancy and energy about yourself and your life and you carry that forward into being a successful into a private practice owner, you will run a successful private practice because it's that natural energy and, and vibe and, and um, abundance and uh swagger shall i say about yourself at this point that ultimately is the source of all of the value of everything that you do they will not tell you that in harvard um but that's ultimately where uh, a small business owner like you and i we get our our you know kind of rewards from it's that level of belief in yourself dare i say it yeah i'm brilliant i i don't expect a uh like a, a disney type you know you know themed you know, rationale into this like storyline. And I, I wanted like the, the cold, hard, you know, facts yeah. and truth. And, and so I appreciate that. I really do. Because I think a lot of people um, have to have that eternal optimism. Um, and I, I default to optimism. I, I will, I, I'm very much like you and that I will always try to see, you know, what, you know, what else can be done in a given yeah. situation. And, and some of that is just being surrounded by you and your, and your coaches and some of the people that are part of your uh, your, uh, your team, but also the other members that are part of your coaching group. I, I would say the eternal optimists stick around and contribute to the group and the group thrives. The, you know, the pessimists slowly uh, start to realize uh, their own limitations. I think self-select out eventually. I could be wrong. It's your group. You've been a part of it for longer. You might, you might have I, more I think, input I think on that. Li- I think like attracts like. And, yeah. and in the end, what you find is that I'm an antagonist. I, I'm an absolute 
much. Um, you will love me or hate me. And you'll love me or hate me because of the views that I have about life and business that often rub up against the one that somebody else has. And I tend to attract the people that are leaning towards my way of looking at life, where when shit hits the fan, it's good. What can I learn? And when things go not quite according to plan, it was just a lesson that I wasn't ready for. And when COVID strikes and the world ends and the business is all shut down, it's great. I'm ready for this because this is the thing that I've been studying for for the last five years with my personal development and my commitment to growth and all of those nights that I wasn't home and I was at seminars or I was plugged into conferences or all of that money that I didn't spend on cars or watches that went to business coaches has actually prepared me now for the for the fight of my life that coincidentally I came out of with a better uh, higher revenue in companies than I did the year before like go figure you know so it, it wasn't how I reacted through COVID it was the five years that I had developed myself as a business owner pre-COVID if you like and so what happens is you I have very few friends. Um, I have millions of acquaintances. I have very few friends. And I even honestly, um, I have very few family members that I can actually really relate to. And over time, I've learned to adapt me in order to fit back into some of the family conversations and friend conversations from school. Um, albeit I went through a phase where it was like, oh, I don't want anything to do with that. And then I realized that was actually costing me some other you know gifts that my family were giving me that I needed to find them rather than just focus on their negative if you like but it does become very difficult for you to be around people when you see the world one way and you see abundance and possibility and you know belief in yourself and you see a challenge and they see a problem it's very hard nearly always for that person to hang around with you because you are an irritant um to their life and, it, and it's very likely that they do feel inferior around you and it's easier for them to to be negative about something and say you know whatever the excuse is as to why you're wrong um or what you'll start getting alex much like what i i've been through eventually when they realize that you are successful and you know what you're saying is right they'll start finding excuses as to why that is okay for you and that you're different and that somehow alex has been blessed with this magical thing from heaven above that makes him immune from all of the shit that goes on in the world right that that phase is coming for you by the way that like if it's not already there it's like well alex is different oh alex has a different dna to the rest of the family or well paul's the you know, my, my mother's now so well paul's the golden goose like you know everything he touches just he's just so lucky like you know and it's oh fuck off like what like whatever do you know what i mean it's complete not a horse crap that that people like to piddle all day because it makes themselves feel feel good misery loves company that is true that is true uh, am i allowed, I am I allowed to swear on this podcast we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead we'll make it explicit we will go ahead uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll uh... beat me out just say it's english just say this guy's english yeah, and it means yeah, something yeah, else i in should yeah, yeah there should be a disclaimer for sure uh, um uh i know it's who you are you know and and from the for the first day that i you know met you virtually uh on a, a webinar or so i think that uh you know you just said hey look this is this is who i am and you said something that i've now come to appreciate uh from the sales side which was, you just said, look, this is who I am. If this offends you, just hop off the webinar right now. Just hop off, <laughs> you know? Uh, and by the way, this is a sales webinar. I'll never forget this. Uh, we're, so, we're so off the tangent right now, but I don't care, you know? You said, uh, um, this is a, a sales webinar for your private practice. And you, if you think for a second, I'm not gonna sell you something, <laughs> just, just hop off, just hop off the webinar because this is not for you. If you think <laughs> you're just gonna get free information and I'm not gonna try to sell you something, just hop off. And I'm sitting in my house, like laughing. My <laughs> wife's looking at me like, what are you? I'm like, I love this guy. I, I honestly love this guy. Um, so anyways, you got to uh, tell it as it is people, the people who right. love it. it and that's it's right. the truth. It's like, what, what you coming on a sales webinar and you are offended at me selling to you. It's like, what, like what, what on earth is like yeah. going wrong in society when we have that level of thinking that people are like offended that somebody shows up wanting to learn how to sell. And then doesn't appreciate actually that the best way for me to teach you how to sell is to sell to you, like figuratively. How dare you? How dare you? <laughs> but well, you, get I that, go you get that type of criticism. Oh, you do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I thought you were just going to teach me something for three hours. It's like, well, yeah, I mean, I did for two hours and 40. And, and if I happen <laughs> to like for the other 20 minutes, basically say I've got some more stuff that you might want to buy. And you think I'm the moron? What? <laughs> No, I think that uh, we're gonna we're gonna come back to some of this for sure. But um, in your recent book that you just published last year, you're calling it your lockdown book, um, yeah. where most people most people uh, prioritize their time and energy on surviving. 
Uh, Pen- no, which, no, no, no. Pen- yeah, on on hey, painting the fence. Painting the fence. I was gonna. That was coming. <laughs> you, you, you absolutely beat me to it. Most people are gonna spend their time elsewhere. Um, you prioritized writing a book, and you got a 300-page leadership and private practice book, how to become a world-class leader and CEO uh, of a private practice. And I, I do want to highlight this book because in this book, you give a a six or seven-page uh, description of your leadership style and. Yeah. Um, you know, I thought that that was a, a, a very heartfelt, a very genuine, but a very direct way of, of um, communicating with your potential uh, employees. And I'm sure you gave it to your current employees as well. And um, so I, I took a page out of the book and I wrote down my leadership style. I got everything out of my head onto paper. It was similar, five or six pages. And I had an interview, yeah. come, uh, a candidate come in for an interview. And of course, I thought the first, the phone interview, the in-person interview, I thought they were a smashing success. I thought she was the right person for the job. I was already ready to hire her. And I thought, well, I wrote this leadership style thing. I should just have her read it, you know, because yeah. I've already done the work. And she turned down the job because of what wonderful. I had written. You knew it was coming. You knew what wonderful. I was going to say. Yep. And, and three years ago, I would have been so pissed off that we had this connection. And well, first of all, three years ago, I would have never written my leadership style. Yeah. And we would have probably ran into three, four, five, six, a dozen problems within 30 days, no doubt. Um, but I do, I do want to highlight that I, I am not the same business owner now that I was when COVID hit. And I'm absolutely yeah. not the same business owner I, I, I was when I first started out. The growth that I've had in business has always stemmed from personal growth. And that's yeah. one thing that I've, I've learned from you over the years is that business growth is always preceded by personal growth. Yeah. Um, so in regards to your personal growth, you were traveling from the UK to America for marketing and seminar. You mentioned it earlier. Yeah. Continuing ed, seminars, that sort of thing. What type of personal growth journey did you go on and how could you relate that to your business growth? I mean, it, it, the two are interwoven. It's, it, is, it is the same. My, grow, my business is just an excuse for me to grow. It's like a, it's like a vehicle, a medium that's going to introduce me to problems and challenges things that I would never have found out about myself had I not grown the business. And, and that's, a, that's, that's a way of thinking about life that is, like, to me, it's, it's somebody taught me that years ago and introduced me to it. It was next level, where most people, it's I'm in business to make $100,000 or I'm in business to make this much money. For me, it became about actually a vehicle to find out about myself and, and learn and grow and to be able to find out how to handle my emotions, how to see problems differently, how to be able to overcome a, a, a challenge with a, a recruitment pro or whatever, whatever, you know, fear, doubt, all of the things that, that business chucks at me. Um, isolation, vulnerability, like uh, having to feel lonely and, you know, sometimes the tides against you and all of that. And it's, how am I going to deal with all of that? And so for me, because I couldn't, um, you know, because I couldn't, I, I wasn't, attached to a specific number or a specific thing that made me a success and I see it as a as a journey that I go on and that will never end no matter how successful monetary wise it may or may not get for me that has been the ultimate journey that I I think I've been on that I've been addicted to that um, whether it's a marketing seminar I was at one on Wednesday and it was a marketing conference that uh, candidly I probably attended seven years ago when I first started learning these things and I knew most of the things but the personal challenge became to go and find something that I'd forgot and bring it back to my office. So instead of thinking I've become, you know, I, I don't need this stuff anymore, my mind plays the other game that is, well, what if there's one thing I forgot? That if I come back from that event or that seminar that I forgot seven years ago, because it's been a while, then ultimately my business and I are gonna be are gonna be stronger. And that's a that's like a mental challenge that I play with myself on a you know on a regular basis. So the the attending of seminars and conferences, I've loved it. It's it's just me on my best day when I get around entrepreneurs. I love being to I love my my big events that I put on. It's the ultimate it's the ultimate hotspot if you like for a business owner um, to be around other people who think and act like them. The content is fifty percent, but the the conversations at the bar with other business owners is is equally as as important, if not if not more. So um, I've been back and forth from the United Kingdom to the US, sometimes as many as twice a month. I've jumped on a plane from England to Texas, did a two day conference, flew back on day three, like the time zone didn't even catch up with me. And I was back in the United Kingdom. Um, and that was the level of commitment I had, if, if you like to want to get to this point where I'm at today. Brilliant. So I'm sure along the way, you've made many mistakes. 
and I'm sure you're, you're not too proud to share some of those with us. Um, what's maybe one or a couple where you re really wish you could go back and go, oh, I, I wish I did that differently. What's something that you could share with our listeners today that they could uh, glean from your insights? Understanding. I mean, I, my, my entire life, Alex, is committed to sharing my mistakes. Every, everything in those books is just a, it's, it's just a diary, an account of things that I fucked up and had to go through and screwed up to get to the point where I actually understood it, that I could apply it for myself and then write about it to, to readers all over the world. And, and really that's one of my bigger, higher kind of goals and could even be my purpose really as I go through life that I'm very happy to share and I'm very happy to be kind of, yeah, I got that wrong. And, and today I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not the business owner I'm going to be in six months. And I may be better at managing a team in six months or understanding cash flow in six months or, or whatever. And that's that that by definition is to me what you know what a leader actually is. So I don't think any of us should ever be, you know, be be frightened about hiding our mistakes. It just um it just reeks of insecurity when when people are, are like that, which you know, by the way, is most of the world and it's another another podcast for another day. But um it's amazing how more I've educated myself on the real ways of the world, the less insecure and less vulnerable I've been and therefore the more open I am to writing about things in books that that just you know just kind of are what they are the biggest mistake as a business owner a failing to understand the importance and um level of requirement and need of building a team by and away head and shoulders above it thinking that I could do it all thinking that I would be better off if I just did it um and not really understanding how to build and develop a team not just in numbers but actually in their their capability as well. Well, I, I really I can attest to that uh, building of a team and and uh, you, you know you you have a need and you just quickly hire someone and you you're not really building a team you're just filling a role yeah. you're just getting you know and and that's certainly a lot of people can relate to that and I want to I want to bring back up again you had a uh, a member uh, of your maybe uh, you know colleague uh, Rob Moore I believe was his name. Yeah. And uh, so he was at one of your last mastermind events and uh, he, he said something that like, like just stayed with me for weeks. And, and actually, you know, I think you said it when you're introducing him, which was when you went to his office in the UK yeah. and you sat down with him and you were just looking around, you're like, wow, there's a lot of people here helping. He's a real estate business, right? He's, That's he's right. got a lot of, a lot of Probably, real estate properties. Yeah. And you walked up and you're like, oh, there's a lot of people. Like, what, what does she do? You know, just pointed to, you know, and he goes, I have no idea. And there was like a long pause. And I, I thought, well, he's, he's the business owner. How does he not know what his people are doing? But then he followed it up by saying, but I know who knows. And you guys walked right up to the operations manager and the operations yeah. manager knew exactly what everybody was doing. And, and that was, that was such a subtle, like that was worth you know, the, the mastermind event right there. And that was the first yeah. 90 seconds of, of his section. And yeah. cause it's a, it's a different way of thinking. If there's one thing I've learned from being around you and your, your team of coaches, it's like you, you guys don't think uh, like normal business owners. You don't think like normal coaches. And I'm a firm believer of um, not repeating the same mistakes, but learning from our mistakes and growing through those. And you don't, uh, um, you, you've said this many times and the, the same level of thinking that gets you into a problem will not get you out of it. And, um, you know, Jim yeah. Rome also, also talks about, you know, that you are the, the, the average of the five people around you, you know? And, um, so I'm trying to surround myself with people who think like you and your team for sure, because what you guys are doing is next level for sure. Um, and so that's like, that, that's why I wanted to have you on because you've learned from a lot of smart people, right? Like you've gone, yeah. you've gone through a lot of training and, so who, who would you say is, is someone that if people can't learn from you, they could learn from you know, a mentor or two or three of yours? Yeah, yeah. You've got to be careful of what the problem is or where you are in the phase. Um, yeah, I'm, good, always cautious. I'm, I'm always cautious of giving names out um, because they are relevant to me at the phase that I was in. So if I introduce you to somebody I'm working with now, it would, like, it would blow your brains. Like if, you know, right. if, you're, if, you're a, if you're at the start of your business growth journey and you start talking to somebody that I'm working with today, it would just be like irrelevant. Like it's like the, the, this stuff's just going to go so far over your, like, your, your head and you'll be literally parking it for five years down the line. The guy that I would always go back to, the fountain, um, the fountain for me, if you could devour everything that this guy's got, I would employ you to do it, a guy called Dan Kennedy. He will teach you marketing and sales like nobody else. He'll teach you mindset like nobody else. He'll give you confidence. Um, he'll talk about 
every aspect of marketing, sales, and and really entrepreneurship that is in that early phase. And I and I preface that that um, there'll be a point where you've got to move on, you know, from that if you like. But in the in the beginning, Dan completely changed my mindset. He com- he would challenge me on everything. I've since had the pleasure of working with him personally in masterminds and being around him. And he's just a, a, a thinker like nobody else. It's breathtaking watching him in a room where we're all, you know, considering ourselves quite smart business owners. And he just sits there and listens. And then two seconds later, he starts talking and we all go to listen, you know, to, to look up to listen to him. And five minutes later, he's given us a perspective on something that none of us could see in the room that only real wisdom, you know, can, it, it, you, you know, that real wisdom is present, if you like. So it would, it would undoubtedly be Dan. Um, it was just a shame he lives in Cleveland and I had to fly to bloody Cleveland Independence three times a year to go or independent like that was the only downside to, to Dan if he was in LA or somewhere it would just be like the, the, the ultimate sweet spot but um, there was something beautiful about the fact that it was in Cleveland and I had to leave Orlando to, to fly to Cleveland where it was freezing cold and not much to do to uh, to go and consult with them but I braved it I've, I've devoured as much as I can of Dan Kennedy um, and he he practices what he preaches for sure yeah. you know you you have to go to him <laughs> yeah uh, uh, everything everything yeah. to, to yeah. him yeah yeah I think you're right with the thinking that ultimately you can't get out of the problem on your own. And, and um, a phrase I was introduced to recently is very similar that you can't think yourself into feeling better. Mm. So you can't, you, you cannot think yourself into feeling better. And it's, it's a trap. It's an illusion that the mind has and a grip it has over you as an individual and as a business owner that says, if I keep thinking about this problem that I've got for long enough, then it will go away or I'll find the answer. And you cannot and ever, never do do that because you're, like what we said, the thinking level is ultimately what needs to, to, to be raised. And instead of it being unconscious, where we're doing things that we already knew and we already kind of thought we understood, we have to have a completely fresh perspective on it and we need to be challenged. And somebody needs to come at us. It's, I'd like to think that whenever I give advice or when I coach people and I counsel them and I say things I say, I'm acutely aware that sometimes people are going, I don't like that. And the minute they do, I know I've done my job. And if somebody says to me, but that's not the advice I wanted, I've probably done my job. And if it's, well, that, that's not what I need, I've probably done my job. And on the contrary, I often find with people when they're giving counsel or mentorship, it's usually what the other person needs to, wants to hear. And it, it's at the same level of thinking um that ultimately got them into the problem in the first place but because it feels nice and it's comfortable we accept that type of advice and yet it just prolongs the agony that we have got ourselves into as a result of the thinking that we have applied and adopted and nearly always because of the people that we're we're surrounded ourselves with so that's that's to me is a big you know is a big one for anybody in business or just not even business just wants to be in improve their quality of their life change your life change your thinking you'll change your life well i can definitely attest to simon one of your coaches every time i hop on a call with him he just will look at me and go how are your numbers and i go yeah i i don't i don't i don't want to hear that simon you know i don't want to talk about my numbers at the moment um and uh but so it just just as a testament it's what needed to be asked uh, it's not what I wanted to be asked. I want to talk about some strategy, Correct. some big, Correct. you know, big picture big, stuff. Fancy. Yeah. 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 That, Cause that's, that's, that fills my cup, you know, like that's fulfilling for me to be talking three, six, nine, 12 months down the road, two years down the road. Um, and even my plans to eventually step out of clinical practice and, and, and be a true CEO of our clinic. Yeah. Even if that means I'm not living in the same state. I don't know if you know this about the state of Illinois, but they're not doing things uh, to actually keep their residents. Uh, so we, there is a mass exodus out of Illinois, California, and New York. Sure, there should be. Uh, it's disgraceful. Yeah. It's yeah. disgraceful. Yeah. The, the arrogance, the, the erroneous thinking that is going on from these governors to suggest that we can just keep making these conditions impossible for the value providers that they will just hang around because they've always hung around. If there's one thing wonderful about life right now, it's a free market and you can pick up your, your trailer and off you go and God bless the internet and God bless Zoom and all of these things that now have come along for business owners who are just going, no, thank you. You can have my business tax if you like, but I'm, I'm not being subject to all of these crazy extra personal taxes and liabilities and things that are ultimately strangling 
uh, the quality of life that the business owner um, the business owner deserves. You want and you want to get out before the stupid exit tax starts as well, because California were trying it. It won't be long before New York and, and Illinois and whoever else is is thinking about this crap. Applies. Yeah, it, yeah, we're we're thinking about Coming it. To Florida. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's on our list. That is on our list. Um, but uh, I I do I do appreciate one thing. I want to mention one thing. When I first met you in person, it was at one of your sales boot camp. Uh, programs, uh, seminars down in uh, Orlando. It was in uh, December of 2019. So I believe, yeah, December 2019. Yeah. yeah and yeah. Um, go to, to I, I, I could tell you barely anything about what was going on. I've got the sales <laughs> script. No, no, this is, this is true. Yeah. You know, you're, you're laughing because you know where I'm going with this. I, I just I'm laughing because remember- I know it's true because people come to a two day event and they go, well, yeah, I know you taught me this thing for like 12 hours and you, you, you know, you, you really nailed this thing and stood on stage for like two entire days. But there was these two things I got, I got from it. And it's like, I had to go through this entire charade to get you two things that, that actually were, were I relevant. Should, I should retract my statement actually, because <laughs> I remember you calling, you, know, you just dialed up phone numbers and from the stage, just started calling physical therapy, um, you know, offices to try to book an appointment. And it yeah. was, it was damn near impossible for you to book an appointment. And that's, that's shocking because these are yeah. business owners that are, I just see that as lost revenue, uh, yeah. a, a life not influenced by an office and lost revenue. That's what I think. Um, and it was, it was entertaining for us. And it was like sad, like for yeah. the people that you were speaking to on the phone. And it was very much eye opening to, to observe that. So kudos to you for, for having the chutzpah to, uh, to do that from the stage. But I, I remember that one, but then I remember Simon, I've mentioned him a couple of times. He's one of your senior coaches yeah, for, yeah for your, uh, your mastermind members. And I remember Simon came up to me and said, are you interested in, in jumping into one of Paul's coaching clubs? And I was like, yeah, I am. Like, I, I think that this guy is and, and his and his team is, is going to be what helps elevate our practice. And, but I was on the fence, you know, I was definitely on the fence and I wanted to learn the sales and I was trying to be methodical on, on my progress with you. And he was like, well, let me know if you have any questions. And of course I didn't have any questions. I was like, I've got to decide this. And then right on after lunch on the second day, he kind of just slides a piece of paper over to me. And I open up the piece of paper and it says, if you don't join the mastermind, will you like where your practice is in one year? And I sat back in my chair, there's all, all this stuff going on. And I was like, man, no. Like I probably thought about it for 10 seconds and it was no, if nothing changes, and I don't join this mastermind, the answer is a resounding no. And so then it, I immediately switched. So yeah. the deciding factor was rather than me validating myself and the decisions I'm making, Simon asked me what I refer to as a loaded question. Yeah. And that, lo- that loaded question planted a thought and then planted a, an outcome that I wanted. And so then I acted on it. Like the decision was made when he asked the question. So that's number one. Number two was when I came up and I was like, hey, Paul, I'm looking to join your, your group. And, uh, and, and I was like, I'm, I'm really interested in it. I'd like to learn more. And you just went on a rant, like right in front of me. You're just like, you need to do this. Here's where your practice can be. Here's the lives that you can influence. Here's what you want. Like, here's the people you went into business for, your family, all this stuff. And then I was sitting there. I was like, but I, I can't do all of this. And you were like, and I'll never forget this. You looked at, you looked me right in the eye and go, I give you permission. Uh, and it's something so small and maybe mundane and trivial yeah. to people, but like, I, I honestly needed that. Like I needed to hear that it was okay to be successful and it was, yeah. it would be okay to take a leap. You yeah. know, it might, it might not all, it not, might not work out. It might not, but I needed to hear like that someone gave me permission because yeah. nobody's really given me permission other than myself. So for someone who's been in the trenches, so to speak, who would give me permission that like, that really resonated with me. So then I came home, I told my wife, I was like, Hey, this is, this is the plan. This is what I'd like to do. And her and I, we have a very like healthy relationship in regards to finances and money. Yeah. And she's very much of the uh, like cost conscious. And I'm very much in the, I'm willing to spend a hundred dollars if we need to spend a hundred dollars yeah. on something, yeah. I'll go without for three years. I, yeah. But if I'm going to spend a hundred dollars, like I'm going to do it. Um, and I, I told her, like, I told her laid out everything and she's like, we, we need to do this. And I love that there was the, we in there. Yes. Uh, she's, we, we need to do this. And so I, I, you know, confirmed, yep, I'm, I'm in, I, I want you know, to be a part of the mastermind. And then a strange thing happened when COVID hit and our business, uh, our business did not come to a screeching halt. 
but we kept learning from you and your group. We kept going and, and our, all things considered, okay, our business started to steadily increase. Every time we would implement one of your strategic, strategic ideas and then the tactics that followed up with it, yeah. our business kept going up and I kept telling her like, we're, we're doing well. Like I'm ready to, I'm ready to hire <laughs> someone. I'm ready to hire someone, you know? And, and it was about, end of September, November, where it was like really like businesses around us were closing, chiropractic offices were closing. There's one group around here. They had 11 clinics. They dropped to two, like in, wow. within, it was, it was, it was detrimental for, for these businesses. And my wife looked at me eventually, you know, a couple, couple days into, I think it was November. And she, she said it was, it was the best decision to join Paul and his team. Uh, and I was like, well, I, I knew that, you know, but for her yeah, to look at me yeah. and go like, you know, God bless Paul, because I, we have no idea where our clinic would be without Cam. You know, I can't, I can't yeah, you know, do yeah. this without Cam's help on, you know, our, our email and campaigns and, and infusion soft training and Simon on his leadership with the financials all stem, you know, from the things that you've taught them. So I know there's a big long commercial for you in the 4% club. And I don't really care. You know, it's our podcast. We can do whatever, what we it, want. It, but it's not, a, yeah, it's not, a, it's I, I, honestly, and it's, it's nice that, that it would even be mentioned that I have those, those masterminds and things, but that's not, not really what, what I think the lesson is there. The lesson right. is that ultimately we all have it within us and, and people are listening to your podcast now. And I've noticed that you're doing your podcast for the same reason that I do my stuff. It's like somebody's capable of so much more. And if you can give them the, the, the leg up, the confidence, the belief in themselves, the uh, permission slip, as it's called, which I got from Dan Kennedy. And it's like, yeah, I give you permission to say the things that you think. And I, and I give you permission to live your life the way that you want to live. And I give you permission, if you like, to be able to defy a few beliefs that you might have that are they're outdated now, Paul. And I give you permission to spend time with your kids on vacation, five, six, seven, eight, nine weeks of the year. If that's what you want to do. Go do it. I give you permission to switch your phone off when you leave and to tell your staff that they don't have permission to call you, even if the building is turning down. Like, I'm not, I don't want to know. I'm not even remotely interested if there's a problem back at the ranch while I'm on vacation with the kids. Otherwise, what was the point of having the ranch in the first place? That It's better off burnt down than affecting my relationship with Natalie and the kids this week when I'm off to, to North Carolina, where, wherever I'm, I'm going with the kids to, you know, for spring break. So I think um, that that's the best bit that I hope people take is that you can't do it alone and and all hopefully i've tried to do with you um and anybody that i counsel with is to help you see that like your ego tells you you can do everything reality suggests that you can't how do we know that because most people are failing at life like it let's just be candid they are failing at life and and it's privately a struggle that they're having every day always wondering second guessing insecurities if they're worthy or good enough like everybody listening to this is going through that same ray of emotions right now and they're all going oh, is this guy talking about me and it's like well news flash like that's that's us all like that's who we are and that's the millions of people around the world sadly that keep choosing to do it on their own and all we did was try to get into a partnership with you which said look you can lean on us i, I won't let you that like i ain't you know did, I, I was born for COVID. like my my personality my outlook my tenacity and hunger was like this is my moment that I'd be on that call with you every day through COVID and I'll pick you up when you're down and I'll kick your ass when it needs to kick in and I'll never let you accept defeat. I'll never let you tell me that COVID is an excuse. Even to this day, my staff have never heard me once go and we can blame COVID. Never. Don't act, I don't want to even talk about it. Not good enough. Not acceptable. Do not get me into that level of thinking. And that's all I've ever tried to do with the, the people that, I, you know, that I, I'm very privileged enough to counsel with. And then what you start to realize is actually, yeah, you do need your wife or you do need your husband. On, on side and you do have to maybe work at that a little and you do have to kind of approach that a little differently and you can't be pig-headed and go home I've signed up for this thing and you should like it and it's like oh actually um you know I, I'm considering this thing and I think it'll benefit us both and he's where I think and you know we're actually in a partnership now with our with our partners and everywhere we look and you know, we've got some we've got some support in our businesses lives we've got some support from our staff I go home I've got some emotional support I've got just a place to go that I don't even have to think about work like somebody asked me yesterday, there's been a few things going on in my life in, in one of the businesses recently. And I have um, one or two people in the company that I share things with. And um, one of these people were like, oh, are, are you, you know, how, how does Natalie take all of this? And I went, what do you mean? She said, what will she say about this? I went, no, I, I'll never, I never even speak about it. Like, you know, when I go home at six, like that's it, I'm done. Like I, I am bringing this home to her. It's just, I'm reliving another situation that doesn't need to happen in the house. But I know if I needed to, I could is the point 
then I'm very selective of what and when I call on that support to do with business. It isn't a continuous emotional dependency on hair, on a coach, on a set of circumstances, a thing. It's actually a, um, a wholehearted dependency on Paul that knows that he's got people around to depend upon when he needs to extend that dependency um if you like and i think that's that's what i what i take i hope people take from from it that you're not i'm not good enough to do it alone you're not good enough to do it alone nobody listening to this podcast is if you want to achieve what i what i call the ultimate version of alex at the other end you will need people around you and you will need to be comfortable going help me like figure help me figure this out and even if it's there's your permission slip go and be the best version that you can be and if it goes wrong there's a phrase that, that I, actually I'll, i'm going to give it to you and this is this is uh the, the little nugget I haven't even shared yet, but it's something that um, somebody taught me very recently. I have, I have a, uh, a few different coaches I work with. If it goes wrong, it can't, because I'd have loved it, which means it won't. And I'll say it again. If it goes wrong, it can't, because I'd have loved it, which means it won't. And you can apply it to every situation in your life. It is the best phrase. If it goes wrong, <gasps> what if it goes wrong? Well, it can't, because if I'm doing the thing, that I'm really passionate about, it means I'd have loved it, which means it won't go wrong. Most people, it's going wrong because they're so stiff and rigid and worried about it going wrong, and that actually multiplies the odds that it will go wrong. When you come at something, a big decision with a, you know what, I absolutely love this, and I, and I, and I want to do this business thing. If it does go wrong, it can't, because I'd have loved it anyway. And even if I learn and take some lessons from being in business for a year, and I loved the idea that I got a chance to be a business owner for a year, I'd have loved that, which stacks the odds in my favor that it won't go wrong. Most people who are failing a business right now have lost passion for it. They don't have a commitment to it, and therefore they're not passionate about it. So they won't invest in something like what I do. They won't invest in something like what you do. That's the people that are struggling, if you like, but the people who are in love with what they do they're happy to spend money with you they're happy to continue committing and investing because they're not tied to an outcome that says i must be a better clinician they're tied to an outcome that says i just love this it's a privilege it's an honor to be able to be a better clinician or a better business owner and because i'm loving it it, it can't go wrong even if it does it won't because i'd have loved it and that's ultimately the metric of success so i'll leave you with that brilliant that's a great place to end uh paul thanks for coming on today uh, really appreciate it. We'll have all your contact info uh, where people can find you on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, uh, the Paul Goff on Twitter, on Facebook, you are Paul Goff on Instagram. You are the Paul Goff, the one Paul Goff with the blue check mark. I just want to throw that out there. And your website is paulgoff.com. Anything else that you, uh, you want to mention before we go? No, wonderful. Paulgoffbooks.com is where all my books are. And obviously my own podcast as well. Paul Goff audio experience on, uh, on iTunes and, wherever you get your podcasts with that. We will, we will make Thank sure you. we include those in the show notes. Our email newsletter is the show notes for those of you listening. So when you enroll in our, our newsletter, we will make sure you get all of Paul's content and those links uh, supplied uh, in the latest email. Paul, thanks again for coming on. Amazing. Really, Pleasure. really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Appreciate it.